Now, I know what you're thinking. Mermaids? What on earth are you talking about? Well, a few months ago in April, I reported on the disappearance of Zay Dada from Mount Niangani in Zimbabwe. During my reporting of that incident, an unrelated but interesting topic came up. I'm not making this up. The belief in mermaids in the region is taken seriously, so much so that it has real and noteworthy consequences. In early February of 2012, the Water Resources Minister, Sam Sepepa Nakomo, in a committee had to explain why work on multiple dam sites had stopped. The government workers at the dam sites of Matar, Manikaland, Gokwe, and the Midlands had all reported being hounded by things in the water. The workers at the time were updating their water pumps and installing new ones, but they began to report unusual experiences. These things in the water, they believed were mermaids, or rather, water spirits. What's interesting is that some of these workers had become terrified of being at the dam sites and all the workers present vowed that they wouldn't return unless the mermaids were appeased. I'm sure you can imagine the confusion, skeptical and weird back and forth that this was causing. One suggestion from those in charge was to bring in foreigners to complete the work because they wouldn't have been exposed to the reports and perhaps cultural beliefs too. However, when these people arrived from various countries, they too began to report unusual things happening at the dam sites. These varied from rocks being thrown from the water to reporting things trying to grab passers-by as they worked. Nakomo stated that the workers had told him that some people had vanished from the sites while others had been chased off. Unfortunately, one quite monumental consequence here was that while the work had been stalled because of this, it was realised that not enough water could be supplied to the population without these dams functioning. The workers also said that they couldn't explain why so many of the pumps had stopped working at the same time. Divers equipped with aqualungs had been dispatched to investigate the cause of the failures and upon inspection, they said that there was no evidence of vandalism and that the circumstances of the failures were unclear. After coming back to the surface, they reported seeing things down there and feeling terrified of whatever it was. Alongside the other workers, they vowed that they wouldn't be going back under the waters of the dam. It's interesting to even think about what this might have looked like in a government committee style meeting, but within this meeting, because of everything that was being reported, and the effects it was having on their ability to provide adequate water supply to the population. It was determined that traditional rituals had to be undertaken to appease the water spirits and to allow the work to continue. These rituals took place where traditional healers came in and performed various acts, including brewing traditional beer to appease them. This apparently worked and when the workers returned, they said that the whole atmosphere had changed and they were able to work undisturbed. I suppose one fair question might be, was this some kind of mass hysteria event? If the belief in these things are quite strong in the local community surrounding the dam, I suppose it is possible to see how rumours and mistaken events might have led to some kind of hysteria. The rituals may have acted as some kind of placebo effect, in that, rather than being effective, the people involved perceived it as being effective, and therefore believed that they wouldn't be bothered anymore. I suppose preference is going to come down to one's personal persuasion in regards to their belief on the matter. However, this wasn't the only time mermaids or water spirits were a problem in the Gokwe Dam. Five years after this incident occurred, something else would take place here. Again, in early to mid-February of 2017, mermaid sightings were occurring at the dam, with locals saying that they'd seen them basking at the banks. These sightings would prelude an incident in which two young people herding cattle would pass away at the dam. The two youngsters were accompanied by another young friend while herding cattle and horses. The surviving friend told the authorities that they had all seen something shimmering under the water in the dam. The two friends believed this to be a big fish and quickly jumped in to catch it. 
Witnesses said that the boys resurfaced and held onto a large rock while catching their breath, but were, and I quote, snatched back into the water. Chief Namangwe oversees jurisdiction that encompasses this area and was quoted as saying, it is reported that on the fateful day, the two boys who were in Form 1 and 2 at Ganye Secondary School were herding cattle when they saw the mermaid at the dam. According to a friend of the deceased boys, his companions jumped into the dam and tried to grab the mermaid because they believed it was just a big fish. But the mermaid pulled them down into the water. He then stated that this wasn't the first time that he'd heard of this happening. Two other people that I am aware of also passed away at the dam in similar circumstances. As a community, we have since performed some rituals to calm down the water spirits. The authorities investigating the incidents refused to comment on what they believed may have happened here, but they did however confirm that all bodies had been retrieved. To believers though, this was reminiscent of an incident that occurred in June of 2000, where villagers in Mahondara woke up to the news that two men had drowned at a local dam. What surprised the locals was that the two villagers in question had reported previously that they'd seen a mermaid at the dam and that they were going to catch it. This made the locals believe that they had been taken by whatever it was beneath the water. It's also interesting the way that the locals speak of these water areas. The chief in Mondoro said that he finds the dam area so eerie that he avoids going anywhere near even during the day. His wife states that the mermaid didn't always inhabit their village's dam, but rather it arrived sometime after construction. She said that one day as she was passing by, she saw a whirlwind in the distance. She said that it was narrow and towering seeming to reach into the lower stratosphere, but always moving towards the lake. When it met the lake, she heard a loud splash as if a boulder had just been thrown in. Another woman, older, doing her laundry at the time, said that it was an ominous spectacle and that she believed it was a water spirit, or rather, a mermaid that had come to live in the pool of water. The chief said that shortly after this whirlwind arrived, people would disappear around the dam and lake. He said that they'd find unfinished laundry draped across the rocks as if abandoned suddenly. Their son also had an incident to share. He shared that he'd taken the family dog fishing near the dam. He said that the dog was sitting nearby when he heard a sudden shriek. He ran towards the dog but only saw where it had entered the water and never returned to the surface. After realising that the dog had gone, he abandoned his fishing equipment and ran out of the area believing that a mermaid had taken the dog. It's also worth pointing out that crocodiles also inhabit the area, so that seems like it could be a likely explanation. I suppose actually, for those that hold the belief in mermaids, especially mermaids taking people beneath the water, crocodile infested areas seem to be a crux here. TheCultureTrip.com states that crocodiles are prevalent in Zimbabwe's water bodies, so one can only assume that this is the case for most bodies of water there. In instances where people have seen others taken beneath the surface, this surely seems like the most plausible reality. But not to many, reports of mermaids taking others is still being reported today. In July of this year, three people disappeared in a pool of water during a ceremony. Here's what was said. Three villagers from Mapanzur communal lands in Masvingo disappeared last Friday after plunging into a pool under mysterious circumstances. The three, whose identities have not been disclosed, were apparently performing rituals in the banks of the Mugoswezi River before jumping into a pool along with two of the villagers. They have not been seen since last week, and relatives are said to be now conducting rituals for their safe return. According to police, two Tazvigwira villagers, who also jumped into the water, re-emerged and were rescued after a prayer session. We then get an update a week afterwards, stating that the pool they disappeared within was very small, and that two of the bodies had now been discovered. The three people went missing, after they plunged into a tiny pool whose depth is about a metre. 
Two of the bodies were found while the mirror crew was there covering the scene. Because the bodies were proving themselves to be quite difficult to find in this shallow pool, and after the length of time it had taken to find two, some of the locals began to suspect that something more unusual was afoot. The third man's body was found the day afterwards. Now, we get a little more detail about exactly what went on here, and it's certainly different, weird, and all around out there for those of us who aren't familiar with the culture, including myself. In an incident that has shocked villagers under Chief Mapanjur in Masvingo, three men drowned in a river during a ceremony, allegedly casting out demons. The three unidentified men had escorted the pastor to the river to cast out demons from one of the congregants when they started speaking in tongues and then disappeared into the river. The chief stated this, On July 15, around 3pm, the pastor stated that he wanted to pray for one of his congregants at the river in order to cast out the evil spirits. On July 16, they went to the river for prayers. During the exercise, a loud sound came out from the river and congregants that had accompanied the pastor started speaking in tongues and rushed into the river, leading the pastor alone on the bank. After a few minutes, the pastor saw a man on the water and rushed in to save him. After an hour, the pastor saw another man in the water who was unharmed. The other three men did not resurface, he said. Okay, I'm not really sure what to make of any of that. So, five men began speaking in tongues during this ceremony, and all five also jumped into the water after hearing a sound from the water. The pastor apparently saved one immediately, and then another resurfaced after an hour. Just from a physiological perspective, you absolutely cannot hold your breath for an hour. So clearly, this man had certainly not spent an hour under the water. I'm also not sure how you can just disappear in a tiny pool like this. Either, as the pastor said, something highly unusual took place here, or someone isn't telling the whole truth. I cast no aspersions, and I'll let you be the judge of that. There are three camps here, as far as I can tell though. One alleges that this was a fake prophet trying to trick people and it had gone wrong. The other alleges that the Prophet did this purposefully to perhaps dispose of individuals he didn't like. And the other believes that something truly out of the ordinary happened. Again, I'll leave you to make up your own mind. There's more on this too. Three people drowned and disappeared under his watch as he tried to conduct a ceremony at a rocky pool at the foot of Mavara Hills. The three were not seen again until the seventh day when their bodies resurfaced one after another. The mystery got deeper. There were trembling sounds that tore through Mavara Hills and down into the pool as the three drowned. These sounds were heard many kilometers away and they continued intermittently for the next week. The prophet, Chituri, would later say this, I am shaken, I am beside myself. This has never happened in my life, and I do not know how to tell people about this, including my own relatives. Tazviguera once came upon human bones while walking in the hills. He believed he was being haunted by the spirit and needed to be cleansed. The two were accompanied by seven others, making it a group of nine attending the pool. At the river, the group stood about 10 meters away and removed their shoes as they prepared to get closer to the pool for the baptism. And locals say it's not deep as kids always play and swim there. Chichuri paced close to the pool where the group was preparing for the ceremony. The nine or so started speaking in tongues, ran and plunged themselves into the pool. There was a huge trembling noise from the pool and the hills above. Forces they could not understand shoved and pushed them under the water. We could see each other as we struggled to escape from the bottom of the pool. Surprisingly, we never bumped against one another and we never gulped any water. I raised my hands to try and alert those outside of our predicament. After a while, I mysteriously found myself thrown out of the pool and lying on the ground. I still don't know how I came out. 
So, nine people entered the water. It read as though it was five before. Anyway, after Taz Viguera, five of the others also said they had no idea how they got out of the water. The remaining three had disappeared, whom the locals believed had been taken by mermaids. On the seventh day, on July 22, the first body belonging to Chirombo was spotted at around 9am floating on the surface. Fear-struck villagers could not go anywhere near the pool. At around 2pm on the same day, the Mirror crew arrived at the pool and an adventurous photographer, Tony Fury, was the first to see the second body of Cosmo emerging out of the water, almost in a sitting position. The following day on the 23rd, the body of Fungi finally emerged out of the water. That is odd mind you, that in a supposedly small, shallow pool, three people could have disappeared for so long. If the dimensions of the body of water are to be fully accepted, the only way in which this seems to make sense is to suggest that three bodies were not in the water for the entire time. I suppose the question then becomes, where did they go? Who, or what, I suppose, took them, and to where? Just as a side note, Taz Viguera, the man who believed he was being haunted, also spoke of seeing little people that he referred to as goblins. I've actually made a few videos on this subject, so if you'd like to learn more, then I'll leave a link in the description and at the top right of the screen now in case you want to open a new tab. Let's change it up and have a look at some unusual incidents involving the little people in Zimbabwe, of which there seems to be many. Let's start here. The local council school, St. Sebastian Secondary, in a dry village about 45 miles south of Second City, Bulawayo, is under investigation by the Education Ministry after several traumatic weeks when teenage girls ran away screaming that they'd been attacked by goblins. Parents say their daughters were attacked in classrooms by the little people who transformed into baboons. Good actual lord, what is even happening in Zimbabwe? Local educational inspector Patrick Jube confirmed the upheavals at the school. As a ministry, when we hear issues, we investigate and we are yet to establish what is really happening at the school. The year after, in 2013, four schools believed that they were experiencing these attacks. Local officials insist that pupils at the schools listed, all in the South Province, have been terrorised by goblins. Many parents have stopped sending their children to school. The headmaster of one of the schools told the state-controlled Chronicle newspaper, The whole school is being affected. We cannot continue operating under such an environment. When the attacks start, pupils run amok. They start screaming and panicking, and eventually the whole school runs amok. Belief in goblins and witchcraft persist in many parts of rural Zimbabwe. Goblin sightings are reported seriously in both the state and the private press. They're not kidding about that, they seem to be taken very seriously, even in absolutely absurd situations. In January of 2014, a family believed that a lodger of theirs had accidentally invited a goblin into their home that had taken refuge in a suitcase. The family insinuate that the little person would cause mayhem in their home purposefully frightening everyone inside and stealing things. They took this suitcase to the police and I'm going to let the Bulawayo 24 News tell the rest. A family from Bulawayo's Niketa 7 suburb dumped its tenant's goblin at the police station, sending cops fleeing in different directions. The incident occurred at about 8pm on Wednesday. One officer said, we heard some screaming coming from the charge office and most officers who had knocked off rushed to see what was happening. At first, everyone gathered around the suitcase wanting to see what was inside. The officer said a traditional healer who had come with the family opened the suitcase and a very weird looking creature jumped out. The officer continued, no one told anyone it was time to run. One minute, the charge office was full, the next, it was empty. I think some people went out through the windows because we could not all have fitted through the door. Police officers gave differing versions about how the goblin looked. 
Some said it looked like a snake with the head of a dog, and others said it was a dog with scales like a pangolin. They all agreed that it smelt terribly. So all the officers in the room believed that something came out of the suitcase which terrified them enough to flee through the windows. What's interesting about this is that the Bulawayo 24 News contacted the deputy police spokesperson, whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, and he stated this. We are handling a case whereby a 34-year-old man was brought to one of our police stations by members of the community following witchcraft suspicions. It is, however, too early to conclude that it was indeed an act of witchcraft. So, I suppose people were blaming the tenant for purposefully doing this, rather than him accidentally inviting the goblin. These stories can be hard to follow, especially because they're so far removed from the norm. Some incidents in which the community believed that the little folk are involved are actually more serious. Here's a report from the Zigawini village in Zigola. Residents from the village are living in fear amid indications that invisible creatures suspected to be goblins have been terrorising them since last year, mysteriously taking their children, livestock and destroying their crops. It is said in September last year, two families lost their children due to goblin attacks. Residents expressed relief after a prophet claimed to have gotten rid of the goblin. However, the peace was short-lived, as it is reported that the residents are once again subjected to suspected goblins that are said to be taking several villagers' cattle. The alleged goblins strike during the night. This was stated by one cattle owner. Every morning we wake up to find another cattle has disappeared, which they later find deceased. At first, we thought it was a thief, so we took turns in guiding them in the hope of catching the thief. It was all in vain, because we never caught anyone, but every morning, we find another deceased cow in different homesteads. So far, 30 cattle have been found deceased in this area. I have also lost some of my cattle. The cattle owner then went on to say that the villagers were seeking traditional interventions to cleanse the area. Whether it's goblins or someone using juju, we are tired and we want the goblins or the person behind this caught. I have heard complaints that the goblins are also destroying some villagers' crops. I found the way this next quote reads amusing. Villagers expressed concern and pleaded for an immediate solution before the attacks get serious. Two children and 30 cattle deceased? Is that not serious enough? What more do you want? It's like, never mind them, someone better do something before it really gets out of hand. Anyway, that's probably a good place to end this video. What do you make of all of this? Mermaids? Goblins? Little folk? What's happening? I'd just like to thank you for watching. If you found the video interesting, then please do leave a like, hit the notification bell, and subscribe on your way out. If you didn't, then feel free to give the video a dislike. I'm just looking for your honest opinion either way. If you'd like to support the channel, then you can buy me a coffee by hitting this button beneath the video, sign up to Patreon, or grab a shirt or a mug from here. I hope that you've had a great day, or evening depending on where you are, and I'll see you in the next one. Be safe guys. Peace.